Hello, welcome to Emotional Badass, where Moxie meets Mindful. I'm your host, Nikki Eisenhower, life coach and psychotherapist. And on today's episode, I'm discussing broken hearts, trust, resiliency, and loving ourselves. It is natural after a broken heart to feel the intensity of our feelings and believe them. After both of my divorces, I swore off of loving anyone else ever. I swore I would protect myself by never trusting again, by being singular and insulated from the possibility of another broken heart. I told myself from the energy of brokenhearted betrayal that I was fundamentally broken and needed to accept that relationships, that a family of any kind, was just not in the cards for me. Some of you hear that, and if you currently have a broken heart or are on the other side of having betrayed yourself or someone betrayed you, usually it's a little of both, you might hear this and think, yeah, that's right. That's the right plan. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be smarter than this vulnerability crap and I'll never be hurt again. That's how I'll win life. Yeah, I'm going to do that and walk into the sunset alone. The tragedy of our society not having emotional education is that we have all sort of stumbled in the dark. Even those of us born with an innate emotional intelligence because we've had little to no direction or we've had a full on misdirection of our intuitive emotional gifts and a miseducation about what is strong emotionally and what is weak, often flip flopping, like teaching men for decades that toughness requires suppression and no emotional expression rather than allowing oneself to become vulnerable and real. And that's courageous. And it requires a deep, fortified strength versus the flimsy mask of strength with emotion hiding behind it, smushed. And ladies who were raised to never be angry, to always be kind, to take it, are at risk of becoming flimsy, stepped on doormats. It takes strength to stand up, to put a hand out and say, stop, I don't like how this feels. I feel angry. I get to have a boundary. Back off. I won't allow you to walk on me. That takes massive strength and courage. When we don't learn about emotions young, we struggle to separate feeling from story. I'm going to say that again. We struggle to separate feeling from story. And we're jumbled up and confused and we exhaust ourselves, especially as highly sensitive people. What my divorces triggered in me was deep pain. My second was easier, wasn't easy, it was easier to navigate and possessed less shaming because I possessed more self-loving skill by then. But the struggle within that all too common and universal dialogue post broken heart is that we do not know how to separate the feeling and be in it with the feeling to help the feeling get acknowledged and then released. That is how we get past something. That is how we get to the other side. We make our own healing journey last longer, take longer, get drawn out, Because without mindfulness training to separate the feeling from the story, we squirm away from the uncomfortable feeling and feel more comfortable within the wall building stories our wounded ego loves to sling. So we resist feeling and waste time and energy with this ego built story about how vulnerability is never going to get me again. So what does it look like to sit with the feelings instead of the story? It sounds like this. I feel broken wide open. I feel raw. 
I hate how I'm feeling. I hate this pain. I'm angry. I feel this and I don't want to. This isn't what I wanted. I feel hurt and the hurt is wide and it's deep. From this place of acknowledging pain, we find understanding and compassion for what we're really going through instead of fears shaming shrinkage from life. More dialogue that helps us sit with the feeling sounds like, I understand this pain I'm in. It comes from having loved, and this love has been taken away. It's gone. I was attached, and I am now detached, and I'm frightened. Breathe, self, breathe. This pain will pass as I sit with it and release it instead of try to avoid or change or overpower it. This is what the hurt needs to scab over. I have survived other pain and I am surviving this despite how it might feel moment to moment. When we don't know how to be present or process pain appropriately, we squirm. In that squirming, some of us pick up alcohol, straighten over the counter drugs to avoid the pain. We leave the gut and the heart where the pain is moving through to go to the head to try to get a sense of control away from our vulnerability. And these stories of the head can be like their own drug. This is why we so easily go into swearing off of love again. It's a fantasy. And I think it's a very popular fantasy for highly sensitive people and empaths that we will finally be able to control how we feel and to never be vulnerable again. That fantasy is quite a drug. We get mad at our own vulnerability. How dare I be so vulnerable? That must be the problem, my vulnerability. And all of this is a desperate attempt to squirm from sitting with the pain. And we might prefer to just hold on to the story than actually let go and heal. So we hold on to what we think we can control. Keeping all care for humans out, vulnerability out, self-protection walls up. We can choose blame of others or ourselves, over this feeling. We can feel powerful instead of vulnerable when we're blaming. It gives us a place to put the pain instead of right square in our own laps. And if I'm blaming myself, I'm not feeling the pain of loss or betrayal or the great unknown that life is forcing me to step into and I didn't choose or I chose it despite not wanting to. Again, extending the process of pain unnecessarily. Thinking we're taking care of ourselves. If you are a highly sensitive person, it is imperative to work on learning the differences between feeling and creating stories that block our resiliency, that work us into a narrow and narrower spectrum of being. A good friend of mine said to me when I said years ago, why should I even try with a man ever again? And he said gently and lovingly, because you have so much love to give and to receive. No, said my heart. I will not be risky with my heart. I can honestly say that the healing from my second divorce was much swifter, not because I cared less or had less of a broken heart, But because I knew that story wouldn't help me, and I knew how to help myself shift out of story and experience the pain so it could move through and out of my body as quickly as possible. I don't believe I will ever be able to stop story from happening when pain strikes. It's a defense mechanism, and I don't have to fight that natural defense mechanism that comes up but I do have to know how to work with it and move past it to keep walking on the seeker's path. So I can use mindfulness to catch that scared story maker and shift to feeling. 
I'll never love again is a story created by pain. And it's just not true. We learn, we grow. We are biologically wired to want to be part of something, whether that's a community or a family or a partnership. We do not heal by shrinking from experiencing the world, shutting down, going inward. In making this shift to let go of the stories, I moved the pain out. Then and only then was there a little tickle, like a little sprout springing from the earth of a loving story of possibility that I could grow my life in any direction I chose. This sprouted from the actions of loving myself by refusing those stories that my pain made up. This loving of myself was key to moving forward without old dysfunctional patterns. From this act of loving myself, I began to date with ease, to have fun without expectations. I liked casual dating, meeting different people. I felt securely attached to myself for the first time in my life. As I dated, the first person I spent some extended time with showed me an argumentative, blaming versus taking responsibility side. And I knew immediately and intuitively I would never see him again, and it ended right there. I knew in that moment I was actually really experiencing my first moments of acting in true love for myself within the context of relationship. All those old corny cliches seem to be very true, that we really cannot fully love others until we fully love ourselves. I was incredibly happy alone, buzzing with loving my life. And that is the energy that connected me to Chris. We lived walking distance from each other when we met. I remember walking home and crying with joy. I finally felt in my heart, my gut, and every cell of my body that I got it. I got what self-love meant actionably, and that in healing my broken heart, I was stronger, more ready to healthily love and be loved like never before. The show wouldn't exist had we not come together. If you are in any pain right now, brokenhearted, I ask you to consider allowing yourself to sit with and through the pain. Rewind, listen to that language again. Write it out, make it your own. Take what works for you and leave the rest. And work to let go of the stories that try to box you in. Allow the pain to move through and then when you are on the other side, allow life, allow love, allow compassion, allow possibility, allow kindness to imagine and dream. Because the one thing I know for sure is that I can survive a broken heart. And my heart is stronger for the ways it's been broken open and mended. Scars are stronger than skin. And that goes for the emotional body too. If you are listening to this and you have had a broken heart, I know you survived it too and are stronger for it. You possess the power, no matter how you feel, to only choose stories that hold you and lift you up. If I'd have successfully walled myself off, the show wouldn't exist. You wouldn't, you wouldn't know me. I'm so glad my stories failed to box me in. Sometimes it feels like a miracle. And that might be a little bit of the secret, y'all. Because we are all miraculous. It's all a miracle when we aren't in fear. I wonder what might happen for you if you let go of a story today. If you supported yourself by allowing pain to simply move through. And lived, walled off, shut down, story free. What happens if you allow yourself to love you in this way? As always, I encourage you to take what works for you and leave the rest. As sensitives, as survivors, as empaths, as intuitives, whatever words you want to use, we are all wildly different and surprisingly similar. I hope there's something that you can take away from this episode 
that helps inspire you, whatever your own work is right now, and that you allow yourself to feel so that you can get to the other side just as quick as you can. Because I know that's where you want to be. It's where you deserve to be. And I promise it's just skills. You can learn how to help take yourself to the other side. And when we do, the next hurt, we move through that more swiftly. And the next hurt after that, we move through that even more swiftly. This is how we build from our own wisdom bank. And this is truly part of the secret to helping life get easier and feel easier. If there's something about this episode that helped you and you'd like to share it, you can share this or any episode directly from our website. I know that when I'm trying to share episodes, that's kind of my go-to is to go to the website and actually share it because we're all using so many different podcasting apps. And I want to take a moment to do some Patreon shout outs. This show really is a circle of support. Since the beginning, y'all have shared the show. Y'all have been our marketing team to get this out there, to have more and more people realize that they're highly sensitive, to help heal their trauma that helps their head knowledge become heart knowledge so that they can feel relief and release. If you're interested in supporting the work that we do, we invite you there. It's a platform where we have exclusive episodes. I do a monthly Q&A live stream. You can submit a question at the $10 level. And that goes to cover all the expenses of the show. So if you want to do that, come hang out, come check it out. Some of the things on there are totally free or you can sign on at the level that you're comfortable with. One of the things we do is we give some Patreon shout outs. So I want to thank these people so much. Y'all are truly the backbone of the show. I want to thank Ashley, Jeff, Evelyn, Wendy, Jennifer. Oh, we've got a full name. I want to thank Tiana Billingsley. Thank you so much. Anne, Bridget, Polly, Hanley. Thank you for bravely giving us permission to use your full name. I want to thank Debbie, Liz, Beth, Dee Dee, Nicole, Lisa, Janelle, Kate, Sarah, and Amber. We give 10% of our Patreon. We pay it forward. If you're interested to hear more of how we do that, you can go listen to the show about The Gathering Place. That was our last Pay It Forward recipient. It's a fantastic organization that supports the homeless and the struggling here in Denver. Light and love. And remember how strong your heart is. I'm an emotional badass. You're an emotional badass. And together we are where Moxie meets Mindful light and love and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>